Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Just uh, doing a quick audio check here. Please let me know if you guys can hear me using the chat. Should be a uh, live chat option, I believe. Oh, I couldn't see it until now. And now I can see it, nice. All right, so we're all good on audio. That is good to know. Kick this thing off and, well, actually now, it's time to start. Right, oh guys, so let's get started with today's webinar or live training session, which I believe is a better name for it. So uh, normally my webinars, or live training sessions run around one to one and a half hours. Decided to do things a little differently this year. I want them to run uh, 20 to 40 minutes, just depending on how much I have to cover. Now I know some of you might be like, well, well they used to be an hour, now they're 40 minutes at most. What's up with that? Am I getting less? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I just decided that webinars would be better if I'm more concise and more to the point and I don't stop to answer questions. So that's why they're gonna be a little bit shorter, but uh, I plan on covering the same content. But also the fact that they're shorter means that I can do more of them throughout the year. So for you, it's a win-win. Anyway, let's get started talking about being concise and all. What are you gonna to learn today? Today you're gonna to learn about what the market is most likely to do in 2021 and why I think it's most likely to do that. Uh, so this is in terms of volatility, trends, ranges, where pairs are going to go, essentially. How to put together a solid trading game plan for 2021 so you can focus on the right setups and the right trades and, you know, so you don't get any surprises. Now, I do one of these webinars every year, so I did one in 2020. And, uh, you know, one of the things I talked about was uh, the same thing I just said now not getting any surprises, but uh, we had a pretty big surprise in 2020. We had COVID, no one was really expecting that. Uh, but to be honest, that didn't really change much in terms of my game plan. My game plan still fared really well through, uh, through COVID, which is just a testament to how important it is to have a game plan. Because no matter what the world throws at you, if you have a solid game plan at the start of the year, you tend to be able to, to roll pretty well with those punches. Now, you know, you can confirm this by going back to my 2020 video and seeing what my game plan was and seeing uh, how, how it worked out all pretty well. But we're gonna talk more about that shortly. Uh, and most importantly today, you're gonna learn the three most powerful setups that you can trade in 2021. So these setups are based on my game plan. So first we're gonna look at the game plan, then we're gonna look at the setups. Uh, I'll give you a basic breakdown of these trade setups and I'll show you why I think they're the most powerful to trade in 2021. These setups can be traded no matter how little free time you have, which is awesome because uh, that's how I design my strategy. I design my strategy to trade with as little free time as possible because I don't want to spend my whole day trading. Now, of course, with trading, the more time you put in, the more you're going to get from it. So yeah, you could trade these with you know, a few hours per week, but obviously you're gonna be catching less trades. You're gonna be limiting yourself to the daily chart, uh, which means uh, just pretty much, it just means you're taking less trades throughout the year. So a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, you can put more time in, trade some of the lower time frame charts and get more out of it if you want to. So it's up to you how you decide to, to do it. These setups are pretty flexible. They can be traded on, on many different timeframes. So by the end of this webinar, you're gonna know exactly what market conditions to expect in 2021 and the best setups to take advantage of those conditions. So, number one, rules. Well, not number one, but before we get into it, rules. Don't be rude or disruptive. I mean, this goes without saying, guys, but I do have to say it because there's always someone, isn't there? Number two, keep your questions until the end. I'm not gonna be looking at the chat during the webinar. So I'm not, I'm not gonna see your questions anyway, so please don't ask questions during the webinar. 
Uh, I just want to flow through it without being, uh, you know, going off track. Uh, and please do not spam. There's going to be a moderator here who's just going to mute spammers, kick them. Please don't spam. Righto. We have a lot to cover, so let's crack into it, guys. Uh, so like I've said, I like to start every trading year with a, with a solid game plan. Uh, because it gives me a strong idea of what market conditions will be, so I can use that to my advantage, and I have a pretty simple process for creating my plan. So to kick things off, I'm going to share my game plan for 2021, and I'm going to show you exactly how I put it together. So let's see how that happens. Number one, this is how a game plan works. Number one, you assess expected market conditions. Number two, you plan how to trade in those conditions. Number three, you execute that plan. Pretty simple and effective. So let's start with assessing what conditions we expect in 2021. If you traded in 2020, you know it was a crazy year with a lot of ups and downs in terms of volatility. Most pairs spent the majority of the year retracing from the 2020 extremes. And I'll show you more of that uh, shortly when I look when we take a look at some charts. For now, I'll just say that I think we're going to see a lot of volatility this year, guys. How do I make that assessment? Well, I use three metrics. The three metrics are average daily range increases, long-term price action analysis, and political climate. Let's break down each of these so you have a full understanding of why I expect high volatility and how I'm going to formulate this game plan and why I'm going to be focusing on the setups that I share. So number one, what is average daily range? Average daily range increases. What is average daily range? Well, let's start with the daily range part. So let's forget about the average part and just talk about daily range. The daily range is the difference between the highest and lowest points price reaches in a day. So it's calculated by taking the highest price a pair has reached in a day and subtracting the lowest price, this leaves you with the amount of pips the pair has ranged in that day. To get the average daily range for a year, you would calculate the daily range for every single day in the year, add it together, and divide it by the amount of days to get an average. So the average daily range for an entire year is basically just the average of every day, or basically uh, the, the pip movement of every day averaged out. Average daily ranges are important because they show us how volatile the market currently is. So the cool thing about ADR is it moves in a pretty predictable pattern. Over the course of six to eight years, I know that's a pretty long period, but over the course of six to eight years, you will get this kind of wave forming. So this sort of pattern here. And if we go back, this chart here starts at uh, 2006. So this point here, I wish that was not there. There we go. This point here is 2006. These numbers here are the pips, the average daily range for 28 pairs. So we could see in 2006, it was 99 pips, 106 pips. Then during the financial crisis, things got very, very, very crazy. And uh, average daily ranges flew up to 173 pips. Uh, pairs like GUPJPY were routinely moving 300, 400, 500 pips in a day. I think that the record in 2008 was a 2,000 pip move in a day for GUPJPY. Uh, then 2009, things started dropping off. They dropped off further in 2010. 11, 12, they hit a pretty low point, at which point they started climbing again. Uh, 2014 was a bit of an anomaly, bit of a weird year there. Uh, but then straight up continuing that kind of wave pattern. Uh, straight up uh, in 2015, continuing with that wave pattern. And then things turned back down in 2016, 2017, 2018. Finally, 2019 was a pretty low point in terms of average daily range. Then things picked up again in 2020. So that was 2020. That was last year. So what is this to the right here? How can I have these numbers? I don't have these numbers. These are just projections. This is what I expect to happen in terms of average daily range uh, over the next few years. So I expect to see another peak like we routine, routinely see over a six to eight year period. 
I expect to see another peak. Uh, so I'm expecting around about 130 pips average daily range uh, in 2021 this year, and maybe 2022 we might get up to 150. Now, why is this important? This, it's all a bunch of numbers. What does it actually mean? Why is it important? Well, you really need to put it into context to understand why it's important. And I'll give you the context right now. Because it might not seem that important, but it is important. It's very important. The difference in average daily movement. So that's how much a pair moves on average in a day from 2019 here to 2020 changed about 24 pips, right? So that means there was an extra 24 pips on average movement per day on each pair, right? That's pretty significant. Now, if I'm right, we're gonna get an extra 30 pips on average movement per day in 2021. So that's 30 pips on top of how much price was moving last year an additional 30 pips per day. That is a lot of extra potential profit. It's also extra potential risk because, you know, that move could be against you. But that extra 30 pips, that amounts to a fair bit of extra profit. And basically what this is, is volatility. So to summarize, I think we're looking at a very good year if we follow the pattern that, that has been established over, over a long period, but further back than 2006, mind you. This chart goes back to 2006, but uh, the basic pattern goes back even further. And honestly, if we have another financial crisis like we did in 2008, which is not very unlikely with, uh, with the way COVID has affected the economy, we might even get to average daily ranges pushing up to 170 level, which would be absurd. But anyway... That's, that's a big maybe. We don't know about that. We just know that uh, average daily ranges are trending up again. And that means that we're going to start seeing more volatility throughout the day. So let's look at the next factor. We've talked about average daily ranges. Let's look at the next factor, which is the actual charts, uh, price action analysis. Remember how I said we have three metrics? This is the next metric, the price action analysis. So, right, for some reason, oh, weekly charts, right. I have to go to the weeklies. So basically uh, what we're looking at here is 2019 in green, 2020 in blue. The shading here, green, 2019, blue, 2020. So in the 2020 version of this webinar, that I think I did in January or February of 2020, uh, I talked about expecting to see price bottoming out and the trends turning around. So I said that I expected to see price kind of, uh, let me move these drawing tools one sec. Should be good enough. I expected to see price kind of stalling out here and turning around. Now, this isn't just on AUD CAD, this is on pretty much all the pairs. If you look at uh, EURUSD, if you look at GPUSD, it's, it's all basically the same thing, where price was at a, at a low point and I was looking for a turnaround. Uh, New Zealand USD is a pretty good example of it too. Towards the end of 2019, we were sitting at a low point and I said that I was expecting a trend up from that low point. Now, I wasn't 100% right. I was expecting things to start trending up from this point here in uh, at the beginning of 2020, but price did dip a fair bit lower. So I was expecting a move up in around about January, February, 2020. The move up didn't really occur until February, well, no, I would say more March, April, 2020. Uh, but it did, it did happen. Now, why is this important? Well, what's important is that a new trend began a new bullish trend began across most of these pairs. So New Zealand USD, we got a new bullish trend forming. Uh, Euro USD, we got a new bullish trend forming. 
This is the weekly chart, mind you. So this is a very significant long-term strong trend. AUD USD, we got a long-term bullish trend forming. AUD CAD, same thing. Now, a lot of the pairs follow this. Uh, you can see here, AUD CHF. Um, not every single pair, obviously Euro AUD trended in the opposite direction. But the point is we hit extreme levels towards the end of 2019. We hit extreme levels and price turned around from those extreme levels. So what do I mean by extreme levels? If you zoom out far enough, you'll see that, for example, here on New Zealand USD, price was at some very significant lows at the end of 2019, start of 2020. Was at some very significant lows here. And that's why I was predicting that price would probably turn around and start trending up. So this brings us to right now, which is what's important right now. What do I expect to happen in 2021? Well, I'm expecting this trend that we saw forming in 2020. I'm expecting it to continue. Why do I expect it to continue? Why wouldn't I expect last year's bearish trend to continue? Well, it's pretty simple. Last year's bearish trend that ended was at some pretty extreme lows, like I was just saying. It was at lows that price hadn't seen for 5, 10, in some cases, ever. Like GUPUSD, it was at lows, at all-time lows, pretty much. Uh, or at least 30, 40, 50 year lows. So when price is at those extreme lows, it's likely that, that uh, it's going to stall out and start trending in the opposite direction. Now, when will that trend end? Generally speaking, it's going to end once price pushes to extreme highs. Now, if you zoom out far enough, like for example, on GPUSD, you will see that we are nowhere near extreme highs. Nowhere near extreme highs. In fact, we're still at pretty extreme lows and we're trending out of those lows. This is across a whole lot of pairs. New Zealand USD, nowhere near the extreme highs it was seeing in 2013. Uh, Euro USD, nowhere near the extreme highs it was seeing in 2014. So there's a lot of room for these pairs to move up. Therefore, I believe we're going to see a nice strong move up this year on most of these pairs. And then when you look at a pair like, obviously where, where USD is uh, the base, like a USD CAD, USD CHF, uh, for example, how I think that they're gonna trend down. But it's not important the direction that they're gonna trend. That's not important because I'm not taking a weekly chart trades. What's important is just the very fact that I think that you're going to trend. So we're going to see, in my opinion, we're gonna see strong trends this year. Short trends on USD CAD, on uh, USD CHF, so on and so forth. Long trends on New Zealand USD, GEP USD, Euro USD, AUD USD, so on and so forth. I think we're going to see some very strong trends. So I'm expecting trending conditions, which is very important because there are specific setups that you can trade in trending conditions that are going to be more profitable. So that is the price action analysis metric. The third metric is politics. I talked about that a little bit. Let's switch back to this and look at the politics. Really quickly, we're gonna cover politics. Uh, this is obviously a big unknown. As always, politics are a big unknown, but we can make a little bit of predictions, uh, especially with, uh, with the US. I think things might stabilize in the US uh, due to the change in president. Look, whatever your opinion on Trump, I'm not going to touch that hornet's nest, but you cannot deny that he has caused a lot of market volatility over the last few years. I mean, you just have to look at the Chinese trade war and, and even just day to day, his tweeting caused a lot of volatility on the Forex market. No, on, on all financial markets, there was a lot of volatility. With uh, this change that has, uh, with, with this election, that seems to have gone Biden's way, I believe we're probably going to see less day-to-day -day volatility and a little bit more stability in the markets in terms of, when I say stability, I don't necessarily mean an improvement for the US. I just mean stability in the sense that we're not going to get those random moves that we were seeing 
uh, that, that Trump was causing with Chinese trade war. We're not going to get those kind of surprises that were, you know, not great for us traders because we don't like surprises. We like to take a trade and for it to go in our direction, not for a surprise tweet to turn it against us. So I think that's probably going to stabilize a bit, which is uh, pretty good. Next is uh, Brexit. Brexit is, fun Brexit is finally over, guys. Finally over. Uh, it's done. <laughs> finally. Uh, which I've, which should mean that we're going to see GDP and Euro kind of simmer down and be a little bit easier to trade this year. Because there's no denying that Brexit made it tough to trade GDP and Euro at certain periods throughout the last few years. Now, I think uh, politics are looking pretty good for us, guys. I think um, we're moving into a period of political calm. Hey, I could be wrong, but uh, all indications point towards a little bit of uh, calmness, uh, more than we've seen in the last several years, which is uh, great. So, let's do a quick summary, guys. This is my game plan for 2020. I expect trends to continue, so I'm going to be focusing on trend following setups, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I'm going to be focusing on keeping my targets to the larger side as I expect volatility and trends to allow me to hit 2R targets more easily. Uh, volatility will most likely be high, uh, so I'm going to be very careful with counter trend trading. My plan is to avoid most counter trend trades this year, not all. There's going to be a very specific type of counter trend trade that I want to trade, which we'll talk about, but uh, I'm going to be avoiding most counter trend trades. Uh, and I'm going to be focusing a lot on extending targets this year. Uh, volatility means larger targets. So once we hit, you know, a two R target, for example, we can extend that target further. We can extend it to 2.5, 3R, 4R, so on and so forth. I'm going to be focusing on target extension. And finally, that brings me to what we're all here for today. Now that you know the game plan the actual setups. The three setups that I'm going to be focusing on today, guys, are trend continuations. Not today, sorry, this year. Three setups I'm focusing on in 2021 are trend continuations. Uh, this is one of the best ways to capture strong trends. Breakouts of major levels. Uh, pretty much the easiest and most powerful setup in my arsenal. This is a new setup that, uh, well, it's not really new. It's just a setup that well, I'll explain that in a sec. Let's just keep going. Uh, and counter trend reversals only from major levels. So this is, like I said, I'm not going to be trading a lot of counter trend reversals. Uh, counter trend reversals are pretty much my bread and butter. That's where a, a lot of my trades are taken throughout the year. This year, I'll most likely, if things go the way I expect them to go, I'll most likely scale back on counter trend reversals uh, and only take them from major levels. But the ones from major levels, I think, still have uh, a lot of a lot of potential. So I'll still be taking those. So let's break down each of these setups, take a look at them, take a look at how they work, and then we'll take a look at some actual examples of these setups. Number one, continuation trades. Continuation trades are pretty simple, guys. Basically, with a continuation trade, you want to look at the major trend so whatever direction the major trend is heading, that's the direction you want to trade your continuation in. Uh, they're best traded on the daily charts, but they're still valid on the 4-hour, 6-hour, 8-hour, 12-hour. They're valid, like I said, only on pairs with a strong daily trend. And you only trade in the direction of the daily trend. I cannot stress that enough. And there needs to be a strong daily trend, a strong established daily trend you know, preferably longer than a month, it's been trending in, in roughly the same direction with minor pullbacks. You want to always try and extend your targets, especially this year. Uh, very important to try and extend your targets on continuation trades. Uh, you want to move your stop to break even after you hit 2R profit if you're extending your targets. And pullbacks are definitely the best place to enter the, these trades. So I'm going to show you an example of a counter trend trade. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm probably only going to show you one example today. 
but you know you could look back on my youtube videos to see examples of of counter trend uh, of sorry uh, continuations i think i might have said counter trend a minute ago i meant continuations you can look back on my youtube videos to see uh examples of continuation trades sorry guys if i miss uh if i'm uh, using the wrong words sometimes i'm getting very little sleep at the moment uh, i got a puppy uh early uh, mid-December, uh, I got a, a little Rottweiler puppy, and man, puppies are a tough work. You don't get very much sleep. You have to get up to let them out to potty uh, a few times each night. So it's, it's a lot of work. So I'm very sleep deprived. So I'm not as sharp as I would normally be. That's why I'm like jumbling up my words every now and then. But we're getting through this. So you know. And I will put that that section up on the members forum. Uh, uh, I'll definitely put that up. I know I said I'm not looking at the chat, but I just uh, check it every every now and then just to make sure there's no one screaming, Nick, there's no sound! Because that happens sometimes. So, back to the, uh, the webinar. Sorry for that kind of... Uh, that offshoot there. Uh, let's get back into it, guys. Continuation trades. Right, I'm gonna switch over to my charts and show you guys some continuation trades. Uh, I'm gonna look at USD CAD for continuation trades. I've pre-picked some trades, that way uh, it would be easier and quicker to show you guys examples. Uh, you know what, I'll show you both these examples. I'll, I'll break down both of these examples. I know I said we're running short on time, but uh, I'll show you both these examples. So this is a basic continuation setup. So you'll notice, number one, that if we zoom out here, we'll switch back to the daily actually, just to see the trend. We've got a very strong bearish trend here. This was in August, 2020. We had a very, very strong bearish trend here. Uh, there's no disputing that this was a strong bearish trend. So that's the first part of trading a, continu a continuation. You're trading a continuation of the trend. So whatever direction the trend's heading, you're trading in the direction of that trend. So we had a strong bearish trend here. And wow, there's 200 concurrent viewers today. And I really don't understand what's going on. This webinar, uh, it was very short notice. I only emailed you guys out about this a few days ago because it all came up short notice. And there's so many people here live. Thank you guys very much for attending live. I'm really flattered to see 200 people here right now. It's, it's just crazy. But anyway, uh, this is the direction of the trend here. That's the direction we want to trade in, right? So... Going back to the eight hour, because this one was traded on the eight hour. Uh, what we got was a break of this support area. So this is a support area. I'm not gonna talk about today how to play support resistance areas. Now, I, I just have to assume here, guys, that a lot of you are familiar with my strategy. If you're not, then you can look back on my YouTube videos. I've done so many webinars on placing support resistance areas. I do not want to spend 30, 40 minutes going through it today. So I'm going to assume you know how to play support resistance areas. If you do not, do not worry about it. I'm going to be adding links to previous webinars below, uh, below this video. Uh, that way you can go back. You could learn how to place these blue areas, what they are, how they work. And, you know, then it'll make more sense to you. But I'm sure most of you already know it because most of you are probably somewhat familiar with my strategy. So, right. We had price break through a support area. So price came to the support area, bounced away, then eventually got through it. This is where you start looking for your continuation setup. Once you get price break, trending down, breaking through support, then you start looking for your continuation setup. Once it breaks through support, what you wanna see is you wanna see a pull back to that support area. Once it pulls back to that support area, you're looking for indecision to form on that area. And uh, actually, I just misspoke again. It did break support, but once support is broken, support becomes resistance. So once it was broken, it's now a resistance area. When price is above it, it's support. When price is below it, it's resistance. 
So you wanna see price push back up to the resistance area, the former support area, now resistance. Stall out on the resistance area, giving us what most of you would probably call a doji, but it doesn't have to be a doji. In this case, we got two doji type candles or spinning tops, whatever these people call these candles. I just, I just call these indecision candles because that's what they are to me. I don't care what the shape is or what they look like. What I care about is price approaching one of my areas of support or resistance and stalling on top of them. It doesn't matter what the shape of the candle is as long as it's stalling. And this was very clear stalling. Why was this clear stalling? You know, why would I consider this to be stalling? Well, it's pretty simple. Look at the few candles leading up to this resistance area. Strong bullish candles, big bullish bodies. Yeah, there was one red candle. There's obviously always gonna be one little candle there that just ruins the party, isn't there? But for the most part, this was a pretty strong bullish move up, right? And then all of a sudden, once it hits the resistance area, boom, it stops. Fails to make a new high. So it fails to get higher than the previous candle. And then for two days, it stalls out on the resistance area. Failing to make new highs. Well, I guess it did kind of make a new high there, but it's like, what, three pips higher? That doesn't count. It's not, it's not a valid new high. Basically, price just went from moving up, undisputably moving up, to moving sideways. That is stalling. So price stalls on the resistance area and then it starts turning around. And that's where you enter the trade. When it starts turning around, the entry goes down here. You want your entry uh, just a little bit below the indecision candle. You want your stop loss uh, just a bit below the, uh, above the indecision candle. And you want your target to be a minimum of 2R, which is here, but then you can try and extend your target. And usually with these trades, you can extend your target because you're trading in the direction of the trend. You can extend your target 3R, 4R. Now I'm not saying that this trade, you would have hit this 4.7R target here. I'm saying there's potential to extend it. Uh, it all depends on how you end up managing the trade uh, if you actually extend it out. Now, let me show you just another quick examples of continuations because they are one of the best setups that I believe uh, is going to happen this year. Uh, I'll show you a daily chart example of a continuation. But it's the same basic concept here, guys. We had a bearish trend on USD CAD. Uh, bearish trend broke through this support area. Strong break of this support area. Broke through it came back up to it, stalled on it, this time a single candle, and then went down. So let's just break this one down piece by piece really quickly. Uh, so the break was here, that one's, that's pretty straightforward. Break of support, price went down, came back up to it. So this is where we start thinking, hey, a continuation might happen. Comes back up to it, uh, stalls out on the resistance area right here. Then the entry goes below the low of indecision, the stop loss goes above the high, and the trade is entered on this candle and held until, you know, it drops down far enough to hit your target. Pretty straightforward stuff, guys. It's it's a straightforward setup. Now, I know that don't, rushing through it uh, here might not make a lot of sense to someone who's not uh, familiar with my strategy. But like I said, I'm open about my trading strategy. There's plenty of videos on my YouTube channel where I go in depth into these things. I cannot go in depth today into these things because each of these aspects of my strategy, if I wanna cover them in depth, it's gonna take 30, 40, 50 minutes. That's each aspect. If I wanna cover placing support resistance in depth, that's 30, 40, 50 minutes right there. If I wanna cover entries in depth, that's another 20, 30 minutes. If I wanna cover indecision in depth, that's another 20, 30 minutes. We're not gonna spend four hours here today. So I'm just giving you the basic setup. If you wanna know more, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, and also I'll be linking below this video to more in-depth breakdowns of how to trade these setups. What we're here to talk about today is the best setups to trade. 
this year, but I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of uh, trading them because it would just take a lot of time. So next, uh, going back to these slides. I really hate slides. Uh, next is breakout setups, guys. Breakout setups are pretty straightforward. Uh, these are one of the newest forms of setups for members, for Forex Mastermind members. Over the next two days, we're going to be doing two additional webinars, which are members only webinars. Uh, and we're going to be talking about breakout trades in depth because they're new and it's something I want you guys to know in depth this year. Uh, we're going to be talking about breakout trades in depth and uh, that's going to happen on Monday and on Tuesday evening. So breakout trades, uh, they're best traded on the daily, but they're also valid on the eight hour and 12 hour. Generally speaking with breakout trades, I wouldn't go much below the eight hour. You can if you want to, but uh, I, I recommend sticking to the eight hour and above. Uh, they're valid only on pairs with strong daily trends. You trade only in the direction of the daily trend, uh, once again. Uh, always extend your, always try to extend your target if you can. Uh, move your stop to break even. Uh, so basically when you hit 2R, if you want to extend, you move your stop to break even and you extend out from there. And you try to extend wherever possible. It's very similar uh, to, to continuations, but uh, the entry aspect is different. So let's talk a little bit about breakout trades. I'll show you an example of a breakout trade. And uh, like I said, for members, we'll be covering these in a lot more depth uh, to tomorrow and the day after. So a breakout trade happens when price approaches an extreme high or low. So what's an extreme high or low? It's a high or low that has not been hit or not being broken rather, in at least six months, at least six months, but preferably a year, two years, three years. That, that's even better. Now I'm willing to take six months, but hey, if I get, uh, oh, oops, I didn't switch to my charts. Uh, if I get a uh, uh, price approaching a level that it hasn't broken in three, four years, that's even better. So this breakout here was from a resistance level, this one here, that had not been broken since uh, price was above it on March 2019, then November 2020. So what's that? That's whatever. It's more than a year. You figure it out. 18 months, something like that. Long enough to meet the basic uh, minimum criteria. So this resistance level was very, very strong. Once price dipped below it in March 2019, it made several attempts at getting above it. One attempt there, second attempt there, third attempt there, fourth attempt there, but it couldn't get above it for a long time. Then eventually, eventually, price broke above it. So that's where the breakout trade occurs. It's a breakout from a strong area of support or resistance. So, uh, yeah, breakout. Uh, generally speaking, you wanna enter these trades after the daily candle closes above the resistance area, right? So you'll notice here, why, some of you might be thinking, why didn't you enter a breakout trade here? Why didn't you enter a breakout trade there? Because those would have failed. It's because for breakout trades, you wait for the daily chart candle to close above it, to close above the resistance area. So this candle here was the first one to close above the resistance area. And that's when the trade was entered. It was entered at the open of that candle. You can even... If you wanna, if you wanna be a little bit, uh, a little bit more efficient with your entry, you can even wait for the daily chart candle to close and then set your entry lower. Now, obviously, the lower you set your entry, the bigger the risk that you're never gonna get triggered into the trade. If you set this entry down here, you never would have got triggered. If you set this entry here, you would have got triggered. 
There's a few ways for judging how low you should set your entry, but that's beyond the scope of today's webinar because that's a, like a whole 30 or 40 minutes in itself. So we're not gonna talk about that today, but the point is you can enter just as soon as that daily candle closes, boom, you, you put your entry in. Your stop loss, you want it to be below the area that was broken. So this was a resistance area that was broken by this candle. This candle closed above it. It has now become support because it's a broken area. Broken resistance is support. Price is now above it, it becomes support. So you wanna place your stop loss below the support level, which is here. Uh, and ideally uh, below another, uh, the law of another candle, which is below the law of this candle, just as a little bit extra protection there. You want your target to be a minimum of 2R, which in this case, would be here. And you can extend that target further if you want to. You could see that this one could have been extended. You could still technically speaking, you wouldn't have held this over the new year, but just, you know, theoretically, you could have extended this one all the way to here and you could still be in it. So that is the exa an example of a simple breakout trade. It's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, guys. We're just waiting for our areas of support resistance to break. As soon as price closes above it, you set your entry, set your stop loss below the broken area, set your target two times the size of your stop loss. That's what 2R means. And you can extend from there. Uh, like I said, for members, we're gonna be going through this in a lot more depth uh, on Tuesday. And uh, on Monday, we're gonna be talking about um, uh, a little bit of the, the things that lead up to trading breakouts. But anyway, finally, Going back to the slides for one final time, we're gonna talk about counter trend trades. Counter trend trades are pretty, they're, they're kind of like a, something you should all be familiar with. If you've been trading my strategy for more than a few weeks, counter trend trades are pretty much my bread and butter. This year, I'm not gonna be trading counter trend trades as much. Now, I'm just gonna quickly jump back in the slides actually to this one, just to show you guys something. Now, breakout trading, I've been saying that that's a new type of trading, but it's not really new. It's in fact, very, very old. Breakout trading is something that I used to do a lot of in, uh, let me move this back up here one sec guys. No. All right, I'm just trying to move my drawing tool so I can draw on this on this uh, chart here. So breakout trading is something that I used to do in this period here, 2008, 2009, 2010, when volatility was crazy high. 2015, I did a little bit of breakout trading too. I'm expecting volatility to be high again over the next few years. So I'm bringing back breakout trading. Breakout trading is essentially something I only do in these periods of high volatility because that's where it works best. Now, also counter trend reversal trades are something that I do less of in these periods of extreme high volatility because they do not work as well in these periods. So breakout trades are nothing new. They're just being kind of brought back because they kind of go on the back burner. And counter trend trading, it's not like it's not working anymore. It's just not as effective in these volatile conditions. And because I believe we're heading into those conditions, it's not as effective anymore. But it will be effective again. And breakout trading won't be as effective again in a few years when things go back to normal. Or not normal so much as just slow down again. Anyway, counter trend reversals basics, they're valid on all time frames, but take care not to counter very strong daily chart trends on the four hour uh, or, uh, that should say all less, four hour or lower, sorry, not, not uh, all higher. Uh, look for trends stalling after big moves, keep your targets tight. You want a 1.5 R target on uh, counter trend reversal trades. You don't want to get greedy with your targets on these trades because you're almost never gonna 
going to hit uh, those larger targets. And you want to give your stops uh, some breathing room. You want to have some a nice wide stop loss on a trade like this. You don't want your stop loss to be uh, too tight. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter if... I should put that into context, actually. You can have a relatively tight stop loss but you don't want to have a stop loss that's you know in front of a ma you know what let's switch to the charts and i'll explain this on the charts right let's get rid of these annoying labels so one other thing about these is you want to trade them from major levels you want to trade them from very strong areas of support or resistance uh, these are counter trend reversals. So we're going back to USD CAD. We already established that USD CAD was trending down when we looked at these continuation setups. Now during continuation setups, you can also trade counter trend reversals. You can trade uh, a reversal that's counter to the direction of the trend. And this is an example of that type of reversal. Now, like I said, USD CAD's trending down. Therefore, when we're looking at USD CAD, we want... Uh, I'm move these drawing tools back. Uh, when we're looking at uh, counter trend reversals, we're trading against the trend. So uh, this is not the trend itself. The trend is, you have to zoom out further to see the trend, but that's the bearish trend on USD CAD. Boom, and we're trading against the trends. Now I know that's scary to a lot of you guys, but uh, there's very specific circumstances where it makes sense to trade against the trend. Number one, you have to establish that you're trading from a strong area of support or resistance. In this case, it's a bearish trend. So we wanna go long from a very strong area of support. This is a strong area of support. Uh, you wait for price to hit your strong area of support, stall out on that support area. Give us a doji or whatever you wanna look for, just stall. Like I was saying before, you just want price to stall on these areas. After price stalls, you set your entry at the high of the indecision candle, you set your stop loss at the low, and you set your target to a minimum of 1.5R. I don't know why I had it up at 2R there. But that's the, the, sorry, I said minimum, I meant to say maximum, a maximum of 1.5R. You want your targets to be 1.5R on these trades. These trades essentially are just kind of taking advantage of strong areas of support or resistance. You take advantage of price hitting strong areas of support resistance because it tends to react at those levels by bouncing away briefly and then continuing down. Now in this specific case, it did bounce away twice and it bounced away significantly. But in most, in most cases, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bounce away just a little bit and then continue through. So that's why we have those nice tight targets on this. You're just taking advantage of these strong areas of support because when a trend hits a strong area of support, generally it won't just go, uh, if it doesn't break straight through and close below it, like in the case of a breakout trade, if it stalls on it, it's generally speaking gonna reverse a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean 1.5R, which is why the targets are tight. Uh, final thing uh, with stop losses, you want to have a pretty tight, uh, pretty uh, generous stop loss rather on these setups. What is a generous stop? A generous stop is a stop that's placed behind barriers. So what are barriers? Barriers are basically anything that price is going to struggle to to push through in order to hit your stop loss. So that's generally speaking going to be an area of support. A support area is a barrier because it's a barrier that price has to make through, it has to break through to hit your stop loss. Also, recent lows are a barrier. So the lows set by these two candles, they're a barrier. So you wanna make sure that your stop loss is no tighter than these barriers here. So you wanna have a pretty generous stop. You can extend this stop out even further if you want to have an even wider stop. Uh, and in this scenario, you would have still hit target. Now, I've been showing you examples of profitable trades. Obviously, not every trade is going to be profitable. Uh, we just don't really have the time to go through uh, a ton of different examples where I show you positive and negative examples. Generally speaking, that's what I do do in webinars. I show you positive and negative examples. 
Uh, I get really in depth into showing uh, all different types of examples, but this webinar is more about sharing the setups themselves, explaining what they are. If you want to learn more about these setups, uh, you can do so by checking out uh, the YouTube channel a bit more. I'll be linking to some videos below where I break, where I talk about these setups. Uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. That is it for today's webinar. We're about 10 minutes over schedule. Uh, let's do a very quick Q&A, guys. A very quick Q&A. For Mastermind members, tomorrow there's going to be a webinar at 8 p.m. Tomorrow's webinar, we're going to be looking in depth at trends and uh, possibly touching on breakout trades. And then on Tuesday's webinar, we're going to be looking in depth at breakout trades so you guys can have a full understanding on how to trade them this year, along with uh, a little bit of new stuff on continuation trades, which I'm going to be talking to you guys about. Uh, those webinars are for Mastermind members only. So I'll see Mastermind members tomorrow. For everyone who's not a Mastermind member, uh, I'm going to stick around just for five to 10 minutes to answer a few questions and then get out of here. Once again, guys, I'm very flattered that there are over 200 people at this webinar live. This was so short notice. I let you guys know about this webinar like, what, four days ago? I was expecting maybe 40, 50 people to attend live. Uh, not the massive turnout we've had here. I'm extremely flattered. Uh, this is really, really awesome. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this webinar. Uh, All right, uh, let's do a few quick ones. I'm just going to pick some of the questions I like. Uh, number one, uh, we'll pick an easy question. Do you anticipate doing 15-minute trades this year? Yeah, definitely. I am going to be trading 15-minute charts this year. Uh, I think it might be a bit riskier to trade 15-minute charts with the increase in volatility. I'm just trying to bring that chat back up. With the increase in volatility, I think it's going to be a little bit harder to trade. Um, 15 minute charts. Uh, Raf, uh, you didn't know this was a public one? Yeah, uh, th only the first uh, first webinar of the year is public and then the other two are members only. Uh, will I still be trading M&W formations this year? Yeah, 100%. Uh, these are the three setups that I am gonna be focusing on. That doesn't mean it's the only setups I'm gonna be trading. If we get some nice MW formations, I'll 100% be trading those those are some of the strongest and best just consistently. Well, not strongest and best, uh, more, more, they're some of the most consistent, some of the easiest setups to make profit from M and W formation. So we will be trading those, no doubt. Those are just kind of like a staple that never goes away. Uh, so yeah. Uh, can I analyze gold? No, sorry, I don't trade gold. Uh, and we're not really here to do chart analysis. Just for last, what's your personal opinion on BTC? Uh, honestly, I love uh, cryptos. Cryptos are awesome, man. Um, they're a bit difficult to trade. They're making it more and more difficult to trade, but I do keep track of cryptos. Uh, I have a whole cryptos list here. I keep track of all the, well, not all, but a lot of the kind of newer cryptos. Uh, cryptos are something I'm really, really interested in. In fact, I have a website called cryptosfornoobs.com. Uh, there's not much content on there right now, but... Um, uh, yeah, cryptos are something I, I quite enjoy. Uh, what's my opinion on BTC? It's uh, hit 40,000. That is absurd. Uh, I think it's probably going to go down, guys. Um, I just don't see it continuing to move up. I think we're going to get price dropping back down. Uh, and I think there's going to be some opportunities to buy once it drops back down. Well, I appreciate you guys showing up at 3 a.m. and uh, 6 a.m. there for Colin. Hope you got to see your family over over the break, Colin. 
you were telling me that uh, you might struggle to see them because of the flooding. Uh, yeah, of course, Kristen. Uh, of course I'll be included. Like I said, tomorrow we're going to be talking about breakout setups in tomorrow's members only webinar. Then that's part of the mastermind course. Oh man, that sucks. I didn't realize it was closed up there too. My mom was telling me that Sydney was closed down. So she was struggling to travel. I didn't realize uh, Queensland was in lockdown too. Uh, the puppy's name is Chopper. It's an Australian thing. It's a pretty unsavory Australian person, Chopper. I just think it's a great name for a Rottweiler. Because they look like big scary dogs, but in truth, Rottweilers aren't scary dogs. They're just big friendly giants. I'll post a few pictures of him. I don't know where I'll post them. Obviously I'll post some to the members forum, but for everyone else to see to see the puppy, I'll, uh, I'll think of a way, probably post it to my social media or something. My uh, partner, she set up a uh, an Instagram for the puppy. Let me see if I can find the Instagram. I'll put it on here. Fo follow my puppy's Instagram, guys. Whereas other traders, at the end of their webinars, they try to sell you their course. I don't do that stuff. I don't try to sell people my course. I try to get them to sign up to my puppy's Instagram, which I make zero dollars from if I can bloody find it. George, can you find it? Are you following it? How is it? Oh, I got it. The Instagram is Hello, I'm Chopper. Uh, Jared, uh, still not 100% sure on the start of the daily analysis, but it will probably be uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. Alrighty guys, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for attending. I'm shocked at the uh, amount of people who actually came in here. That's really, really cool. Thank you guys so much for attending. Uh, I'll see you guys, I'll see you members uh, for tomorrow's webinar, which is gonna be a lot smaller affair because it's members only. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll see the rest of you, uh, throughout the year. Monday and Tuesday is in fact at 8 GMT. But yeah, thank you very much guys. It's been an hour, 20 minutes over schedule, but hey, is what it is. Thank you guys and bye.